It is Monday, February 5th, 2024. Please make sure to like, share, and subscribe. A uh, few things I want to talk about today. And I jotted down some notes here, printed up some articles. Feel free to share any of my videos and make sure to leave a comment down below. I want to know what all of you are thinking. Uh, so many people enjoy the comments. So many people have learned and absorbed so much knowledge in those comments. So keep the comments coming. But uh, I want to start the video out today by saying this. We are not in tough times yet. We're not in the bad times yet. And, you know, I, I see people making videos and they literally are having a mental breakdown at this point. They're, they're crying. Uh, they're screaming. Uh, they seem very unbalanced. And I'm thinking, what are these people going to do when the tough times get here? You know, watching grown men cry right now, what are they going to do when the tough times come to America? Because these are not the tough times, America. These will look back and say these were the good times. We have not seen tough times yet. And yet I'm watching people crying, uh, using tissues because they're, they're so uh, disturbed uh, with what's happening right now. They haven't seen anything yet. They've not seen tough times. And, you know, I would much rather these people, instead of grabbing a, a box of tissues, I'd much rather see you doing judo or jujitsu or uh, Muay Thai or, or something than grabbing a box of tissues. Tissues and, and tears are not going to save you, ladies and gentlemen. You better start learning how to defend yourself right now. You better learn to get your finances in order. You better get the debts paid off because we are about to see tough times. And it is going, I think the farther we get into 2024, we are going to see tougher times. And I think well into 2025, we're going to see a decade at least of very, very tough times coming to America. Um, again, you, you know, if this is already causing people to lose their minds, if it's causing people to cry, they're going to faint. Uh, they are going to be out of their minds when the tough times get here. So don't rely on tissues, ladies and gentlemen. Get skills. Rely on your skills right now. Uh, I was reading something on social media, and just shifting gears here a little bit. Uh, I was reading something on social media last night, and it was uh, a real estate agent talking about the limited supplies of uh, limited supply of housing on the market. And he says here, and I'm going to kind of paraphrase through some of this, but I thought it was important to talk about because so many people are misleading other people. You have real estate agents, and this doesn't mean every real estate agent or every broker is bad, but so many people are misleading people because they have to make money. And you know, even with people that make these videos, some of the things that people are selling on these videos, they should be ashamed of themselves. And again, you, you look for yourself, you observe how people are walking. Are they really walking the walk or are they out to make money? Are they selling garbage or are they selling something that you may really, really need? Uh, personally, I would never recommend anything to anybody out there unless I've used it and I use it daily and I really believe in it and I believe it's an asset for everybody. I would never recommend it. I would never recommend it because some company comes to me and says, we'll give you some money to, to you know sell this garbage. Really pay attention to who you're listening to because so many people are misleading other people and so many of these channels are selling so much garbage that, that you don't need or are going to get you in trouble. But getting back to, to this article or this, this comment on social media, he says, uh, this means as the Fed pivots down on rates three times, which there's no guarantee because remember it started at six to seven. Now we're at three, but what if something happens in the next couple months? Does that mean that this is a guarantee that we're going to get three rate cuts before again, the beginning of the year, it was three to seven. Now it's, excuse me, it was six or seven. Now it's three. What if it's two? What if it's one? What if it's none? But things have already changed a lot since the end of, of 2023, uh, January of 2024. Again, we were at looking at six to seven. That's what we were told cuts. Now it's three cuts and there's no guarantee that we'll even get three. But this gentleman says that basically we're guaranteed to get three cuts uh, and, and there will be so many buyers after this, after, after this limited inventory pushing home prices up even higher. Um, I, I completely disagree. 
Uh, he says, here comes another heated seller's market. Comment down below, are we gonna see another heated seller's market in the housing market? Most people who bought a house last year, they're already upside down. Builders have already lowered their prices 18, 20, or new, new home builders have already lowered prices 18 to 20%. They're, throw, they're doing mortgage buy downs, they're throwing in incentives, they're doing whatever they have to to sell these homes. He, uh, he says the Fed was unable to raise mortgage rates high enough to bring down home prices due to the massive debt the government created. Now, I'm confused. I, I thought that during a booming economy, like the one that we're being told every day that we're in, where we have record unemployment, 3.7%, job numbers absolutely surging. We just added 353,000 jobs. And I know the data is all a bunch of BS, but this is what the Fed is going by. So we're being told that things are booming, uh, inflation's coming down, more job creation, lowest unemployment, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Why aren't people buying homes at this point then? Why would you need to lower interest rates to get people to buy homes? But again, this is the typical real estate agent uh, broker who does not want to accept reality. And the reality is this, the average potential buyer is broke. There's too much debt. So I saw some interesting data. And while we're talking about real estate here, I think that this really... Um, reassures and verifies what I'm saying. Uh, they in this uh, in this article I was reading earlier today it gave a list of cities, and it talked about DTI debt to income. And I'm not going to go over all of them, but I'll go over a few of them here. The first one: Las Vegas and Henderson, Nevada. They broke down the share of home loans uh, in Las Vegas and Henderson, Nevada, and found that 54.9 percent DTI debt to income. That means that literally 55% of the buyer's income is going to service the mortgage. That is ludicrous, 100% unsustainable. San Diego, California, they broke down the share of loans there and found the debt to income ratio at 56.2%. Los Angeles and Anaheim, California, they broke down uh, the share of, of, loan, uh, of home loans there and found the DTI debt to income 57.9%, almost 58% of a buyer's paycheck is going to just service the mortgage on that property. Riverside and San Bernardino, coming to you right now today from Riverside County, the DTI, the debt to income, 60.7%. This, ladies and gentlemen, is another reason why real estate and the housing market will collapse it has to collapse because this is completely unsustainable. And any of these real estate agents or brokers telling you that you better get in this market because they may lower rates three times. And what are they going to lower? 25 basis points each if they even do it. I don't even see how the Fed can even lower rates this year at this point. Uh, did you look at the jobs market? The jobs report at 353,000. How, how are they going to justify cutting rates if this keeps up? And if they do cut rates, is it going to be 25 basis points? Are we going to get a 1% cut? And what does that mean for housing? What, what are we going to see? 6.25% 30 years, 6.5% 30 year. I mean, bankrate.com today is 7.06% for a 30 year. So this agent is saying th that the overpriced housing market uh, and that the, the debt that buyers have right now really has nothing to do with the slowdown. It's all about the inventory. It's not about the buyers. It's not about the debt. It's not about the overpriced homes. It's about inventory. Do you believe that? I don't. Comment down below. I want to know your thoughts on this. Uh, you know, buyers just need to, they just need lower rates to buy overpriced homes. I, I mean, I think that's ridiculous. Why doesn't this agent Say, hey, we need, to, we need to tell the sellers to start lowering their prices so that we can get buyers into this market because we all know that the housing market is completely overpriced. So we should take on more debt by just having lower rates. But at the end of the day, you're taking on more debt. You're just servicing it at a lower rate. I'd much rather have a higher rate and a much lower debt and service a, a lower debt at a higher rate and maybe put more money down. But no, they want to get you into something no matter how much it costs, no matter how much you make, no matter how much debt you have, it doesn't matter. As long as they can break it down into a lower monthly payment, 
these type of people want to scam you into buying something and you are going to pay a severe price here when you begin to lose liquidity in these homes and things go down uh, or you lose your job. Again, they're, they're not thinking about reality. They're not looking at how many people are losing their jobs. They're not looking at the amount of debt. How about credit card debt? We're going to see an all-time high here very, very soon with credit card debt. Um, while people's uh, uh, credit scores are being destroyed, and they're going to continue to be destroyed. Why? Because people can't pay this money back. They're late on the car payments. They're late on the credit card payments. They're late on the rent payments. They're late on the buy, they're late on the buy now, pay later plans. They're late on almost everything, utility bills. And this is going to continue to ding people's credit. And so how are these people going to qualify to buy a home? And why would they when they can't even pay their light bill? They can't even make a car payment. And we have people out there telling them to jump in and buy a house once interest rates get low enough. That is absolute suicide, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I don't see the housing market getting any better anytime soon. Uh, I'm going to stick to my guns here. I believe we're going to see a massive housing collapse in America. When that happens, I don't know. But you're looking at, at a collapse taking place right now because literally nothing is selling. We've never seen home sales this low ever. This is uh, a, a home depression right now. But some people believe if you lower rates and nobody has a job and people have destroyed credit and people aren't working, that that's going to save it. And who's to say that if the Fed does begin to cut rates, that we don't see the opposite, that we don't begin to see markets really um, begin to have trouble. And who's to say that home that uh, mortgage rates are just going to come down because the, the because the Fed lowered rates? It's all tied into that ten year, ladies and gentlemen. And so uh, I, I think people are under this miscon misconception that oh, if the Fed just you know lowers rates enough, that you know mortgage rates are going to go down. They may go down a little. I don't think they're going to go down a whole lot. But we have to pay attention to the 10-year bond yield. Um, that is really dictating what's going on here. And it was up It was up a lot today. In fact, it was up 13 basis points at 4.16%. This is going to have a lot to say about mortgage rates, credit card rates, uh, auto loan rates, you name it. This right here, 4.16. Here we are, back above 4%. Again, Dow Jones was down over 400 points this morning. It recovered a little bit, down 274. And again, bankrate.com, 30-year mortgage, 7.06%. Uh, mortgage rates jump back over 7% as stronger economic data rolls in on CNBC today. Here's another one from Fox Business. Credit card debt poised to hit a new record high. This is not good for home buyers, if you're trying to buy a home, how can you put money away? And what happens when you become late on the credit card payments, your credit's dinged, and you're paying 23 to 29% now on a credit card. How in the world are people going to buy a house when they can't even uh, live without their credit cards? I mean, they are literally paying for essentials, utility bills, food, auto insurance, rent payments, all on credit cards now, ladies and gentlemen. And we have real estate agents telling you and I that this is going to be a hot housing market. Uh, this is going to be a seller's market. Are you kidding me? I mean, these people are delirious and they are going to, they are going to financially ruin people by talking like this and, and giving this type uh, of advice. Be very, very, if you're in the market, be very, very careful. Do your due diligence. Make sure you have a seasoned real estate agent who's being truthful with you. Because at the end of the day, these people have to sell homes to make money. This is what they do. If they don't sell homes, they don't make money. I've never in my lifetime have, have ever heard a real estate agent say, this is a bad time to buy a house. Have you? Please correct me if I'm wrong. Estee Lauder to lay off up to 5% of workforce. Layoffs every day. Not good for the housing market. Uh... Fox Business, fast food prices set to rise at McDonald's, Chipotle, and others as California minimum wage now about ready to hit $20 per hour. So if a restaurant has 60, I think it's 60 or 65 restaurants, a chain, uh, nationally, then in California, that restaurant like McDonald's or Chipotle has got to pay their employees $20. So I guess uh, the way that everyone is thinking now, our politicians, is, well, to fight inflation, we'll just pay people more money. 
Think about that. We'll just pay people more money to do the same job. And so now we have people in the fast food industry making $20 an hour. Guess who's going to pay for this at the end of the day? You are. So when you go and get a burger, you go get a burrito at Chipotle, you're going to be paying more now because the person behind the counter is making $20 an hour. So you're going to pay for this. So how does that fight inflation? When, yeah, they're making more money, but you have to pay more money because the price of that food item is going up. Makes no sense whatsoever. Uh, maybe they should lower taxes. Maybe we should have less inflation. Maybe we should have more purchasing power with our dollars. And maybe um, we wouldn't have to you know, r raise fast food wages to $20 per hour if, if people actually had real purchasing power. But then again, we now have people choosing careers in the fast food industry, a, 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 a industry that originally was basically for high school students, uh, college students working part-time, retirees working part-time. These were never career paths. And unfortunately now today, many people have a career. They may have a, uh, they may have a degree hanging on the wall from a, a, a nice college, uh, they, maybe they went to UCI Irvine. Uh, maybe they went to USC for all I know. And they're working at Starbucks. I mean, this is the reality of it, ladies and gentlemen. $120,000 in college tuition debt. And now they're making $20 an hour at Del Taco. Uh, ABC News. Now this, uh, we're going to shift gears here. This really bothers me. Uh, and I watched this a, a few times about a week ago. Many of you may have seen this on the news. Uh, there was a woman... Uh, who was eating lunch in Los Angeles. Uh, I'll give you the title of this right now because this this is uh, about a week old now and, and there's been some uh, changes in the story and some updates. Suspect arrested in theft of French bulldog that left owner clinging to car in downtown Los Angeles. And you can Google this, YouTube it. It's a crazy video. Uh, happened like a week ago. The lady is sitting out in front of a Whole Foods having lunch with her little French bulldog and a young woman about 21 years old, uh, 21 years old, her name's uh, Sadie Slater, I believe, uh, is the suspect who has just been arrested for stealing the dog. She ran up to, to this, this woman, grabbed the leash out of her hands, ran off with the dog, jumped in the car with three male adults, it, it, I think it was like a Toyota Camry or something, and they drove off. And this woman, the owner of this dog, jumped on the hood of this car. And these people are speeding down downtown LA with this woman on the hood of their car, pleading to get her French bulldog back. Uh, so again, this woman, this 21-year-old woman has been arrested. No word if they've recovered the dog. The dog's name is Onyx. But you all know I'm an animal lover. I love dogs, especially uh I have a French bulldog, and I will tell you right now, I don't leave the house with her uh, unless I am armed. She has a full security detail. Um, I can't even imagine being in the place of this woman, uh, clinging to the hood of that car. Um, boy, it would probably, this story would probably be a lot different. Uh, I would tell you that. It would probably end a lot different. Um, mm, wow. Uh, but this is just, I mean, could you first off put yourself in this position? You're having lunch with with your dog, whatever type of dog you have. You love it; it's part of the part of the family. And somebody comes up and grabs your dog, runs off, and jumps in a car and drives off. I mean, I couldn't even imagine. I, I couldn't even imagine. Um, and I can't even imagine if I was on the hood of that car. Uh, it would. Oh, it would be. It would be a. This would be a whole different story, ladies and gentlemen. A uh, whole different story, but. Uh, yeah, I mean, this is, and I bring this up because this is the time in history we live in now that you have to be so careful that people are so aggressive and people are so desperate that they will just take your dog so that they can sell your dog somewhere online or on Craigslist for quick money. And they don't care about destroying your life. They don't care about taking your family member. They don't care. I mean, if they can just make a quick buck, they don't care. Here's another one from the New York Post today. Video captures brazen Amazon driver trying to steal puppy from family's yard. Uh, this took place in Georgia. Tarika Currents, I believe is her name. Tarika Currents said that her young daughter noticed that the Amazon driver lured 
lured their little red-nosed puppy pit bull into his delivery truck. And I will tell you, one of the best dogs in the world is a pit bull. And you know, people, I know somebody will comment and say, oh, that's a terrible dog. It's a demon dog. Oh, those dogs are killers and you know, blah, blah, blah. Uh, everybody says that till their home has been broken into, then they get a pit bull. Uh, one of the best dogs on planet Earth. And really quick, I bring, uh, I, I want to bring this up too. Last week, about a mile from our house at another country club, there was a home invasion that took place in the afternoon. 1.40 p.m. in the afternoon, uh, a home invasion took place in a gated country club one mile from our house. Uh, so you better be awake and aware of your environment, your surroundings, even when you're at home. Careful, when somebody knocks on your door, rings the bell, a lot of people just open the door. And that's exactly what happened. And they got in the house. So l luckily, it, it, it didn't end too bad. They took off pretty quickly. Uh, but it could have been much worse. But we're talking about crimes in these type of areas now that 10 years ago, you would have never heard of. Five years ago, you would have never heard of anything like this. Now, it's becoming very, very common in broad daylight, 1.40 p.m. Unbelievable. But getting back to this article, Tarika rushed to confront the driver. She then opened up the rear door of the Amazon truck and saw her puppy in the back. Uh, they have fired the driver. Police are investigating. She does have her dog back. And, and again, be careful of your uh, with your animals if you're leaving them out outside you know or in the backyard i've seen so many videos where people will just reach over and take somebody's dog or they'll sneak in the backyard take somebody's dog and what about your kids y you know yeah people will take your dogs but they'll take your kids too you better be very very careful people who have kids i mean be careful uh, you, you cannot just leave your kids alone today. I mean, I remember back in the day we would ride our bikes till the sun went down and all over the neighborhood. And I mean, just like we had no fear, but today's a different world. And it's really, really sad that you can't, you can't leave your French bulldog outside. You can't leave your kids outside because somebody might just take them. They don't care about taking a family member, whether it's your kid or your dog. They don't care. They don't care about destroying your life. It's all about money. It's all about, you know, whatever, whatever they want to do. And so be very, very careful. Uh, I'm going to close with this last article. I thought this was pretty cool. UFC fighter, Renato Mocano. Mocano, I believe I'm pronouncing it right. I've not seen this guy fight before. Renato Mocano. Moicano, from Brazil. Uh, he fought Saturday night, UFC 85. He won. And... He showed a, a lot of enthusiasm. I watched this video, and at the end of the fight, he's being interviewed, very uh, enthusiastic. Uh, he said a few things, and, and, and if you get a chance, you can YouTube it, check it out. He said, there is right and there is wrong. And he said, if we're not careful here, he's not even from here. He's going to become a citizen uh in America, in two years, he will become a citizen and he wants to become a police officer. But he said, there is right, there is wrong. And if we're not careful here in America, a country that he says he loves because he spent so much time here and he's going to become a citizen here in the next two years, he says, if we're not careful, we will become a third world country. He went on to say that Americans need to go to church, respect the law. Something is wrong in America. This is somebody from the outside looking in who still wants to come here. He's going to come here legally. He'll be, he'll be a citizen in two years and he wants to be a police officer once he becomes a citizen. Think about what he's saying. There is right, there is wrong. If we're not careful, we can become a third world country. Americans need to go to church, respect the law, Something is wrong in America. So there are people that don't even live here that see big problems. They see that something is wrong. They see that we're, we're, we're getting away from God, that we're not respecting law. We're not respecting people. We're not respecting the police. We're not respecting ourselves. And the rest of the world is watching us and they see the problems. And this is why I, I believe that you're going to see 
new currencies and new financial systems rise up and compete against America because um, the, the world has watched America collapse from the inside. They've watched the weaponization of the dollar. Uh, they've watched the, the weaponization of the military. And the, the world has lost faith. We, they, they see how we've, we've walked away from God, turned our backs. Uh, just the immorality now in America uh, everybody wants to be a social media star. Uh, just our priorities are no longer what they were 20, 30, 50, 100 years ago. And they see a much weaker America. And the world's going to look for strength. And that's why they're going to look at other countries and other currencies and other financial systems because they don't like what they're seeing taking place here. And they haven't liked what they've seen taking place here. And they see the weakness, and the world's going to look for strength. And unfortunately, if something isn't corrected very soon here in America, um, you can kiss the U.S. dollar goodbye. You can kiss the financial system goodbye. There's going to be other things competing and replacing what we have. And to think it can't happen, uh, I feel sorry for you because it can happen. Um, it's a really, really... Uh, scary time, ladies and gentlemen. And I would make sure as I leave you today, get your house in order. Make sure that you're protecting your household. Make sure you have security. Um, make sure you're walking close to God. And, and really make sure you're aware of what's going on. You know, the sad thing, the real concerning thing is, is most people in this country have no idea what's going on. They're completely oblivious to the dangers. And those will be the people that will go into a chaotic rage. These are the people that will be coming, knocking on your door, probably kicking your door in because they're starving, their kids are starving, and they're going to want what you have um, because they didn't take the time to listen. They didn't take the time to do any due diligence. They didn't take the time to prepare. You did. So be careful out there, and God bless every one of you. Thanks for tuning in. Please like, share, and subscribe. The news is not going to get better. If you're looking for good news, um, you're probably going to have to go to another channel because this is reality, and um, we're going to have to deal with what we got to deal with, and it's not going to get better. The, the thing is, what do we do now to protect ourselves and, and, and to make sure that we survive and prosper uh, during the worst of times, but mainly survive? and lose as little as possible because there are going to be a lot of people out there that lose everything. Be safe. God bless.